so if we if we um, complete the square we usually run into a situation and, and I'm gonna pick one of the homework problems and then I'll come back and show you where it comes from so let's do let's just do problem number 14 out of the textbook so if we do problem number 14 out of the textbook we're asked to solve for or x squared plus 5x minus 9 equals 0 all right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add 9 to both sides and we get x squared plus 5 um, is equal to positive 9 now what is oh this has got an x in it right 5x right okay so now what mr. Adams said the next step once we get it to look like this I'm gonna take whatever this number is and I'm gonna divide it by 2 and square it okay so I'm going to say x squared plus 5x is equal to 9 and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take plus 5 over 2 and square it on both sides right that's what makes it legal whatever you do on one side you have to do on the other now the question is why do you do that mr. Adams here is the answer I'm gonna just put your brain on pause we'll come back to the step in a second if I take the reason we do that is because it's technically x plus 5 squared will give you this stuff right here how do I know that it's rigged so if I put an x here and 5 over 2 here and an x here and 5 over 2 here and then I multiply it out I get x squared I get plus 5 halves x here positive just multiplying the row by the columns uh, 5 halves x here and then what's 5 halves times 5 halves? Five halves squared, right? Now what I what I'm really doing is I'm multiplying it right because this is squared, I'm multiplying it by itself. And so then my answer is x squared plus five halves x plus 5 halves x plus 5 halves squared okay well when you have 5 halves plus 5 halves what do you end up with 10 halves what's 10 halves 5 so what I've done is I have created a perfect square by taking that middle number and dividing it by 2 and then squaring it I've created a perfect square so what I've done is I'm able to go from this step and say x squared plus 5 over 2 squared equals 9 plus 25 over 4 because this line right here is the same as all the stuff here so every time we're going to take that middle number we're going to divide it by 2 and square it and what that does is it, it, it rigs it up so we could we can uh, take a perfect square so now let's finish this problem now that we're running out of space how do I add 9 to 25 fourths? So I've got x squared plus 5 over 2, all that stuff squared. And it's not x squared, it's x. Oops. And so this is x, right? So it's x plus 5 over 2 squared. And I suppose I could write this as 36 over 4. Isn't that the same as 9? 
Yes, Mr. Adams. So this is where we're at. Well, that would be x plus 5 over 2 squared is equal to, what's 25 plus 36? What's that? 61 over 4? Is that right? Well, I sure hope we get the right answer. I didn't make any mistakes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. So over here, I'm going to get x plus 5 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 61 over 4. What problem was that, 14? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x plus 5 over 2 equals um, the square root of 61 over the square root of 4, or x plus 5 over 2 equals the square root negative square root of 61 over the square root of 4. And remember, that's a property of square roots, right? I could do that, right? Yeah? So now I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I get x is equal to the square root of 61. What's the square root of 4? 2 minus 5 over 2. Or x is equal to negative square root of 61 over 2 minus 5 over 2. You guys with me so far, or is this where it starts to look confusing? OK. So what can I do? Can I clean that up a little bit? Could I write it like this? x equals the square root of 61 minus 5 all over 2. Or x equals minus the square root of 61 minus 5 all over 2. Can I leave it like that? Yeah. Any questions?